Okay, time for some 5.1 section review. Okay, first problem. Solve this system of two equations for x and y by graphing. Now to do that, you graph both equations and their linear equations and where the two lines intersect will be the point of solution because that point will have x and y values shared by both equations. So why don't you do that? Pause the video and graph both of those linear equations and find the point of solution. Okay, so to do this by graphing, um, well, first of all, it'd probably be best to have some graph paper because it really matters how carefully you graph this. So a graph paper and a straight edge will really help. In the homework, you have those graphs that I already have, or the graph paper you already have. So use a straight edge, and you should be able to get these to work out. x plus y equal 4. Two easy points are the intercepts. When x is 0, y is 4. When y is 0, we're left with x equals 4. Just covering up the y here, because y is 0. And so we, we get our two points that we need, 0, 4, and 4, 0, the intercepts. OK, so there's our first line. Our second line, x minus y equals 6. Uh, when x is 6, y is 0. That's one intercept. When y, or, or when x is 0, we have negative y equals 6. That means y has to equal negative 6. The negative of negative 6 is 6. So plotting those two points, 6, 0, the intercept over here, 0, negative 6, way at the bottom. You can just barely see it on the bottom of the screen. Then putting a straight edge through, and it gets me pretty close you know, even with what I've constructed here, to the point 5, negative 1. Well, how do we know for sure that's the solution? Plug the x and y back into both equations. When x is 5, y is negative 1, we get 4. When x is 5, 5 minus a negative 1 equals positive 6. So it works for both equations, and it is indeed the solution x equals 5, y equals negative 1. And you can see the drawback of this method is that um, if your point of intersection didn't happen to be in, ni in nice whole numbers, it'd be kind of hard to tell exactly where they're intersecting. But it is a, it is a nice method to just dem demonstrate how we get solutions of linear systems. That shared point has to be on both lines. Okay, the next problem. Solve the system x plus y equals 2, x plus y equals 4 by graphing. Just like the previous problem, graph both lines and see where they intersect. So why don't you graph these two lines and see if you can find the point of intersection. Pause the video and do that. Okay, so I've plotted both these lines, and I've just used the intercepts. When x is 0, y is 2. When y is 0, x is 2. And then for the other line, I got the intercepts 4, 0, and 0, 4. So it shouldn't take too long to graph these And using that method. And then when we graph them, we see there is no point of intersection. That's because the lines are parallel. They both have the same slope. You know, for each line, for the, for the line in purple, I, I got these new markers just uh, recently from Amazon, all these different colors now. Um, purple line, down 2 over 2, that has a slope of negative 1. The green line, down 4 over 4, that has a slope of negative 1. And you could rewrite them in slope-intercept form 
and find they have a slope of negative 1. Since the lines are parallel, there is no solution. There is no point of intersection. So that's the answer here, no solution. And that's always the case for two parallel lines. In our next problem, we're going to solve the system 2x plus y equals 6, y equals x minus 9 by substitution. That means we substitute from one equation into the other so that we can get one equation with one unknown and then solve for that unknown, using that solution to find the other unknown. So what we would do here is take y equal x minus 9, since y and since y equals x minus 9, I almost did this wrong, we're going to replace that y in the first equation with x minus 9. I highlighted these in red. Now they're correctly highlighted. So take that y out and replace it with x minus 9. You'll get one equation in the unknown x which you can then solve. So the equation you're going to get, you're going to get is 2x plus the x minus 9 equals 6. Now you should be able to solve that equation for x once you get that solution for x, plug it into either equation to find y. I would suggest plug it into the second equation to figure out what y has to equal. So give that a try. Solve for x and then solve for y. So we've solved this equation like you've solved many equations before. Add like terms. Um, get all the x's alone on one side. So we get 3x minus 9 equals 6. 3x equals 9 plus 6, 15. Divide both sides by 3. And we get x equals 5. Now we can plug that result into either equation. I would pick the second equation. y equals x minus 9. So that means y equals 5 minus, minus 9. y equals negative four. And we can plug those two results in our first equation just to make sure it is the correct answer. When x is five we get ten plus negative four makes six. So the x and y work for both equations. That's how we check. And that's our answer to our system. x equals five, y equals uh, negative four. Okay, next, next problem. Solve the system 2x plus 3y equal 4, y equals 3x minus 1. So here we're going to plug in the 3x minus 1 for the y in the second equation. And the only difference here is you're going to have to put parentheses around that 3x minus 1 and then distribute by this 3. So remember the parentheses, put this quantity into the first equation, solve it for x, and then use that answer to find y. So give this a try on your own. Okay, so when we plug in the 3x minus 1 for y, and use the parentheses, we get 2x plus 3 times the quantity, 3x minus 1 equals Four. when we distribute, get 2x plus 9x minus 3 equals 4. Combine the like terms 2x and 9x to make 11x minus 3 equals 4. Add 3 to both sides and we get 11x equals 7. Dividing both sides by 11 gives us x equals 7 elevenths. Now we can use that to find the y value. And we have some fractions to deal with, but that's a good fraction review. So see if you can, if you, if you haven't done so already, find that y value, and then we'll go from there. So we plug the um, 7 elevenths in for the x. 
3 times the 7 elevenths minus 1. To multiply 3 by a 7 elevenths, we write 3 as 3 over 1 times 7 over 11, giving us 21 over 11 minus 1. And we have to rewrite 1 as 11 elevenths. We need a common denominator. 21 elevenths minus 11 elevenths is 10 elevenths. And I've checked both of these answers in the first equation. They do work. 14 elevenths plus 30 elevenths makes 44 elevenths, which is 4. So the answers do check out. So our solution is x equals 7 elevenths, y equals 10 elevenths. Okay, one more example for this section. Solve the system 3x minus y equal 10, y equal 3x minus 1, and substitute from one equation into the other. And give this a try. See if you can do this. So we plug that 3x minus 1 into that first equation for y. That gives us 3x minus the quantity 3x minus 1 in parentheses equals 10. Um, well, when we remove those parentheses, the 3x minus 3x is just 0x's. We're subtracting a negative 1, which makes positive 1 equals 10. And uh-oh, spaghetti-o, what do we have here? Um, we have a contradiction. How can 1 equal 10? Well, it's impossible. Whenever you get this kind of thing happening, what it means is you have two lines that are parallel. They never intersect. And when you try to solve by substitution, you get this contradictory statement. That means there is no solution. And there was at least one homework problem like that. So no solution will always be the case in that situation. Okay, well that's it for the 5.1 review problems. And if you have questions, ask them in discussions. Uh, some people are already making use of that, which is great.